Greetings to all. I'm Irene Sophia Joseph. I'm a clinical optometrist practicing in UAE. Uh, today I'm going to speak to you all on the spectacle options for myopia control. The objectives here we are looking at is to see what is myopia and the importance of myopia control and the available options. So myopia or nearsightedness or negative refractive error is a common eye condition which causes objects at distance to appear blurred while close-up objects remain clear. The American Academy of Ophthalmology classifies the refractive error as low if it's less than 3 diopters, moderate between 3 and 6 diopters and high if it's more than 6 diopters. So what can cause myopia? While the exact cause is not fully understood, there are many factors like genetics or even environmental factors and lifestyle choices which may play a role. Recent studies have shown that the prevalence has increased globally, particularly among children and young adults. If we look at North America, it has increased from 34 to 58% and looking at Asia from 50 to 66% in certain countries. And it's not just Asia, but even look at Europe or South African population, there's increased prevalence. The International Myopia Institute has defined pathologic myopia when it's associated with excessive axial elongation, leading to structural changes in the posterior segment of the eye. So high myopia has choroidal thinning, tessellated fundus, but pathologic myopia is associated with chorioretinal atrophy, sometimes leading to neovascularization, formation and enlargement of the Brooks membrane holes, also leading to macular atrophy. So one diopter progression is associated with a 67% increase in the prevalence of pathologic myopia. Myopia also increases the risk of severe eye disorders. If you look at this table, you can see that as the level of myopia increases, the risk of the ocular pathology occurring also increases. So for example, if you look at a low myope, the risk of glaucoma is about two times in a low myope. Whereas if there is high myopia, the risk of glaucoma occurring is 14 times. And if you look at myopic maculopathy, in a low myope, there's twice the chance that it can occur, while the myopia between 5 and 7 diopters, you can see that the chance of myopic maculopathy to occur is about 41 times. So the risk increases. And also individuals with high myopia find it very difficult to carry on with their everyday activities like driving or reading without their corrective glasses. And also these ocular conditions, if treated sometimes or if left untreated, causes permanent visual loss. Brian Holden and his team of expert scientists have published in 2016 and they have estimated that myopia and high myopia will significantly increase in prevalence globally. And they estimated that by 2050, about 5 billion people are going to be myopic and about 1 billion people are going to be highly myopic, which means that high myopia can become a leading cause of blindness by 2050. And not just that, the other inferences from this study are that children are becoming myopic at a very early age and early onset leads to rapid myopia progression which leads to high levels of myopia and of course high levels of myopia increases the risk of myopic pathology in the eye. There are various options available for myopia control and if you look at the graph below, it shows the various methods used in different studies to control myopia progression, be it using spectacle options as bifocals or multifocals or the peripheral defocus spectacles and contact lenses for corneal reshaping and also soft contact lenses. And the numbers above each bar shows the percentage reduction in spherical refractive error. And of course, under correction, which is the bar showing in red is a disaster because it actually needs to increase in myopia. So initially it was believed that the strain in the eye or the pressure on the accommodation system of the eye is a contributing factor for developing myopia or the progression of myopia and hence the bifocals or multifocal spectacles were believed to help reduce the strain on the eye while focusing on near objects and thereby decrease the progression of myopia. So the newer concept for myopia progression spectacle lenses is the peripheral defocus lens which has been widely studied already 
and it's scientifically proven that the myopic defocus that these lenses create help reduce the progression in myopia. So let's look a little about the image shell on the retina. So we know that in a normal emetropic eye, the rays are focused on the retina on the fovea and in a myopic eye, the axial rays are focused in front of the retina. So what happens to the peripheral rays and the rays falling in the peripheral retina? If the rays fall in front of the retina, then there is a myopic defocus on the retina and if the rays fall behind the retina, then there's a hyperopic defocus on the retina. So what happens when myopia is corrected with regular spectacles or regular contact lenses? The central rays fall on the retina and it's clearly in focus, whereas the peripheral rays fall behind the retina, causing a hyperopic defocus on the peripheral retina. And this hyperopic defocus acts as a stimulating factor for eye elongation and thereby increasing the myopia progression. So the first spectacle lenses which were made to reduce this peripheral hyperopic defocus is the one with the DIMS technology, which is the defocus incorporated multiple segments. If you look at this lens, there is a central clear area allowing the rays to fall on the fovea for visual correction. And in the mid periphery, you can see multiple segments. So these are multiple segments of plus 3.5 diopters each causing the myopic defocus in the mid periphery and this is supposed to reduce the hyperopic defocus and thereby reduce the progression of myopia and studies have shown that they slow myopia progression on an average by about 60 percent. Another technology used is the HALT technology or the highly aspherical lens lit target where there is again a central area of 9 millimeters of clear zone for myopia correction which is surrounded by 11 rings of aspherical lenslets at about 1 mm diameter each and this is supposed to create the myopic defocus in the periphery thereby reducing myopia progression and studies have shown that full time wearing of Hulk lenses increase the myopia control efficacy to about 67% in terms of refractive error and about 60% in terms of axial length elongation. So another technology is the care technology which uses cylindrical annular refractive elements to create the myopic defocus in the periphery and this comes with two designs of central zone, uh, two sizes of central clear zone for myopia correction followed by the annual rings of refractive elements and studies with this technology have shown that average emetropic progression ratio for axial length was up to 86% for children between 10 to 12 years of age and about 63% for children between 7 to 9 years of age. So quite effective in controlling myopia progression. And the latest technology is the DOT or the diffusion optics technology which is used in spectacles to control myopia progression and this uses the contrast theory for myopia. This does not use the hyperopic defocus theory but there is a contrast theory which states that overstimulation of the retina due to high contrast is associated with overstimulation of eye elongation and thereby increasing the myopia progression. So these lenses are designed in such a way that again there's a central clear area for myopia correction and the periphery is completely covered with micro dots. So these dots scatter the light thereby reducing the contrast of the light falling in the periphery of the retina. And they have been studied to reduce the retinal contrast and thereby myopia progression by 59%. So to conclude, we see that in the last decade, there's been significant progress in the field of spectacle lenses, especially for myopia management. And various studies have clinically proven that it's also effective up to 70% to control myopia progression, especially in children who are rapidly progressing and who are at high risk for developing ocular pathology due to high myopia. And eye care practitioners, it is very essential that we stay updated with the various technologies available and options available so that we can appropriately recommend for our patient population.